there's just so much wisdom in our body, just like in our store consciousness. It hasn't been appreciated in most of the ways most people have been trained <laughs> to live in the world. Is not in touch with the incredible wisdom of the body. And that includes when you say things like, I, I knew it in my gut. I had a gut feeling. <laughs> Our gut has neurons. <laughs> it is real. Our body is not just our brain that knows things. Our heart has neurons. All these phrases that we've come up with in our different languages, they are really accurate. When we practice a spiritual path, the only vehicle we have to practice that is, is a body. There has been in Christianity and Buddhism both and other traditions as well a kind of a veering into this uh, dualism between body and mind and a negation of the body as being not spiritual which is connected to patriarchy the feminine body being earth bound and this energy of transcendence of getting away from all the material <laughs> realities of babies and poop and <laughs> blood and <laughs> feeding and, and cleaning and the sense that, that spirituality is about purity and you won't have the full experience <laughs> if you're trying to get out of your body because there is so much that only through being in the body that can be really experienced and known. What I'm interested in more now, but what I'm seeing in many places is a much bigger respect and turning towards how do we really be in our bodies? How do we listen to our bodies? Let our bodies lead the way, right? So when I'm working with someone, for example, in mentoring in a spiritual kind of directing fashion, a lot of times we cannot move through something through words alone. If they're struggling with something, something's arising, it's when we start to go into the body where I'll say, well, where do you feel this in your body? Or what is this showing up like? When we start to be with emotions in the body, then something can shift. And so then we bring, if it's tightness in the throat or this tension behind the eyes or this heaviness, this darkness in the belly, then, okay, bringing, bringing awareness to that, bringing space, letting that have space, letting that be there. What does that need? What would that like from you? So be, then we can be in dialogue with it. We can begin to care for it. And then always, whatever it needs, it's very understandable. There's the ability to relate to that with compassion, with this shift rather than this pain that's doing something to me that I want to get rid of. It becomes, there's this part of me that needs attention that I can actually attend to. When we go into our bodies, we bring online the part of ourself that has access to much more facility if we're not feeling what's happening in our body and we're sort of from here up, we actually don't have access to the part of ourself that can care for ourself. We have to go below the neck <laughs> to access that. That lives in these other centers. I've been studying more with Raja Selvam. He did somatic experiencing but then created a a slightly different path of in integral somatic psychology where it's all about connecting with emotions in the body and also been studying with Resma Menachem who does somatic abolitionism looking at um, you know all the ways trauma lives in the body and how do you really notice not just the physical body but all the things that the body picks up on your vibes the vibes you get from a situation, the memories, the impulses, the moods, the sensing. Maybe it's tingling in your hands, or maybe it's your hips wanting to move, or maybe it's 
you're wanting to hum and express all these different folks that I'm finding are bringing an element I didn't have much awareness of that really allow a lot more circulation to happen. I was talking earlier about circulation between mind and store. You have to be in the body for those things to circulate, right? It's like if you are carrying a 50 pound bag with one hand, it's, it's really hard. But if you hold it in both hands, you carry it with your whole body, you can do that. And so what's so wise about bringing this attention into the body is you get to bring more of yourself to the task if you can spread what you're feeling around, which is counterintuitive because you don't, if it's painful, if it hurts, if it's unfamiliar, scary, you don't want it to get bigger. But actually if it gets bigger, if more parts of your body can hold it, it becomes more diffuse. It becomes easier to hold. So giving it space, allowing things to circulate, allowing things to express, we have a tendency to shut ourselves down a lot of the times and not express certain things. There's only certain things you can do in daily life that are acceptable. Right? You can't just start humming and swaying, you know, in the middle of a dinner with people, right? So there are all these ways that our body wants to move and knows how to move or, or express itself to allow things to release. This is interplay, this exformation, these practices that the body has in all cultures that are so natural, but that certain cultures have really shut down. Being embodied helps us to even feel that we want that. There's so many things we don't even know our body wants until we take the time to feel and notice that we have a body. <laughs> this has been helpful for me when people have offered this to me as a practice and I've offered it to others, they found it helpful too. If they're stuck between a couple of different choices and they don't know what to do and they're cogitating about, well, if I do this, what about this? Well, what if I go this way? When you picture yourself doing this option, how does it feel in your body? And when you picture yourself doing that, how does it feel in your body? And usually people know right away. When they just get into their body, they know what one thing feels like and what another thing feels like. And one usually feels quite different <laughs> physically bodily. So that's body wisdom. That's the power of the body to say, hey, this is what I know to be true. The mind, we can go in many circles and, and pros and cons and what about if this happens, but the body is just like, nope. <laughs> but that's a skill also to be developed is to tap into that power.